Fair Catherine, most fair, will you vouchsafe to teach a soldier terms such as will enter at a lady's ear and plead his love suit to her gentle heart? Your majesty shall mock me. I cannot speak your England. Kate, if you will love me soundly with your French heart, I will be glad to hear you confess it brokenly with your English tongue. Do you like me, Kate? Uh, uh, pardon me, I cannot tell what is like me. <laughs> an angel is like you, Kate, and you are like an angel. Que dit-il? Que je suis semblant à les anges? Oui, vraiment. So for your grace, and did it? I I said so, dear one, and I must not. Ke I must not blush to affirm it. <laughs> what says she, fair one, that the tongues of men are full of deceits? Oui, that the tongues of the man is be full of deceits. That is the princess. <laughs> the, the princess is the better Englishwoman, in faith. My wooing is fit for thy understanding, and I am glad thou canst speak no better English, for if thou couldst, Thou would find me such a plain king that thou would swear that I had sold my farm to buy my crown. <laughs> I know no ways to mince it in love, but directly to say, I love you. If you urged me farther than to say, do you in faith? Why, I have worn out my suit. Come, give me thy answer in faith, do. And so, clap hands in a bargain. What say you, lady? <laughs> So, both honor, me understand well. Mary, for if you would put me to verses or to dance for your sake, Kate, why, you undid me. For the one, I have no words nor measure. For the other, I have no strength in measure. Yet, a reasonable measure in strength. For if I could win a lady at leapfrog, or by vaulting into my saddle with armor on my back, under the correction of much bragging be it spoken, I should quickly leap into a wife. Or, or if I might buffet for my love, or if I might bound my horse for her favors, why, I could lay on like a butcher and sit like a jack and it's never off. But before God, Kate, I cannot look greenly nor gasp out my eloquence. I have no cunning in protestation, only downright oaths, which I never use till urge, nor never break for urging. Thou canst love a fellow of this temperament whose face is not worth sunburning, who never looks into a glass for the love of what he finds there. Let thine eye be thy cook. I speak to thee, plain soldier. If thou canst love such a one, take me. If not, to say to thee that I shall die, tis true, though for thy love by the Lord, no. Yet I love thee too. If thou would have such a one, take me. Take me, take a soldier. Take a soldier, take a king. And what sayest thou then? Speak, my fair, and fairly, I pray thee. Is it possible that I should love the enemy of France? <sighs> no. It is not possible you should love the enemy of France. But in loving me, Kate, you should love the friend of France. <laughs> For I love France so well that I would not part with a village of her. I would have her all mine, and Kate, when France is mine and I am yours, and yours is France, and you are mine. I cannot tell what is that. No, Kate. Then I shall tell thee in French. <laughs> Which I am sure will hang about my tongue like a newly married wife about her husband's neck, hardly to be shook <laughs> off. <clears throat> Je compte sur la possession de France. <laughs> Avez-vous la possession de moi? <laughs> oh, what else? <laughs> Let me see. Oh, Saint to me be my speed. Um, uh, donc votre et vous, et vous est mine. <laughs> it is as easy for me, Kate, to conquer the kingdom as to speak so much more French. <laughs> I shall never move thee in French unless it be to laugh at me. 
Sa photo ne le pense que vous parlez est mieux l'anglais je parle. No, Katie, your faith is not. But thy speaking of my tongue and I of thine, most truly falsely, must needs be granted to me be much of one. But dost thou understand thus much English? Canst thou love me? I cannot tell. Can any of your neighbors tell okay? Kate? I'll go ask them. <laughs> Come! I know thou lovest me, and at night, when you go into your closet, you will question this gentlewoman about me, and you will to her dispraise in me those parts that you love in your heart. But mock me mercifully, the rather gentle princess, Kate, for I love thee cruelly. If ever thou beest mine, which I have a saving faith that thou shalt, shall we not? What say you then, my fair Fleur de Luce? <laughs> I do not know that. No. It's not now to know, but now to promise. Do but now promise, Kate, that you will endeavor for your French part of such a boy and for my English moiety. Take the word of a king and a bachelor. What say you then? La plus belle, Catherine du Monde, mon très cher, et des vignes du sein. Your Majesty, have I false points enough to deceive the most sage demoiselle that is in France? Now fie upon my false rage. By mine honor, in plain English, I love thee. By which honor I dare not say that thou lovest me. Yet my blood begins to flatter me that thou dost. Notwithstanding the poor and untempering effect of my visage, but now beshrew my father's ambition. He was thinking of civil wars when he got me. Therefore was I born with a stubborn outside, with an aspect of iron, that when I come to woo ladies, I fright them. But in faith, Kate, the elder I wax, the better I shall appear. My comfort is that old age, that ill layer up of beauty, can do no more spoil upon my face. <laughs> thou hast me. If thou hast me at the worst, and thou shalt wear me, if thou wear me better and better. <laughs> So therefore, will you have me? Put aside your maiden blushes with the looks of an empress. Confess to me, take me by the hand, and say, Harry of England, I am thine. By which words shall no sooner touch my ear withal, and I shall say to thee, England is thine, Ireland is thine, France is thine, and Harry Plantagenet is thine. Who, though I speak it before his face, if he be not the best the fellow with the best kings, thou shalt find the best king of good fellows. There, come, break thy mind to me in broken music, for thy voice is music and thy English broken. Therefore, queen of all, for Catherine, break thy mind to me in broken music. Wilt thou have me? That is as it shall please the Roy Mon Père. Nay, it shall please him well, Kate. It shall please him, Kate. Then it shall also content me. Upon that, I kiss your hand and call you my queen. Laissez, Monseigneur, laissez, laissez. Je ne veux pas que vous baissez votre grandeur et baissez la main de un autre seigneur indigné sur le tour. Je te supplie, mon très puissant seigneur. Then I shall kiss your lips, Kate. Les dames et demoiselles, pour être baissées de bord de nos cils, n'est pas le tout de droit. Madame, my interpreter, what, what says she? That it not be the fashion for the ladies of France. I cannot tell uh, what is a baissier in English. To kiss. Uh, your Majesty, entendra better que moi. It is not fashionable for the maids in France to kiss before they are married, would you oui. say? Oui, mon. Kate, nice customs curtsy to great kings. We, we must not be confined within the weak list of a country's fashions. We are the makers of manners, Kate. And the liberty that follows stops the mouths of all fine faults. So I shall do yours. For upholding your country's fashions and denying me a kiss, Therefore, patiently and yielding. <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> you have witchcraft in your lips, Kate. <laughs> there is more eloquence in a sugar touch of them than in the tongues of the French council. And they shall sooner persuade Harry of England than a royal petition of mine. Uh, here comes your father. 